You're listening to FMGRadio.com. Are you ready to take control of your physical, emotional, spiritual, professional, and financial health? Are you ready to experience great success in your life? Each week, join Dr. Diane A. Thompson and her guests for tools and strategies to help you take control of your health and inspire you to live your best life. Now here is your host, Dr. Diane A. Thompson. Welcome to Health Talk with Dr. Diane M.D. This is the show designed to inform and inspire you to a healthier lifestyle. I am your host, Diane A. Thompson, M.D., and as always, it is my pleasure spending time with you on this broadcast with the goal that maybe you'll learn one piece of information that may take your health and your life to a higher level. I will remind you that the information presented in this broadcast is for educational purposes only and is not intended for diagnosis or treatment. Please seek the advice from your healthcare provider before making any changes to your health. All right, so the holiday season is here, and we know that this is a time that is often marked with celebration and overindulgence. And not only do we overspend, but many times we overeat. In fact, it is often said that during the holiday meal, one may consume several days' worth of calories. Well, my guest today says the holiday season does not have to result in overeating or weight gain. Karen Ansel is a nutrition consultant, journalist, an author specializing in nutrition, health, and wellness. She received her master's degree in clinical nutrition from New York University. She's also the co-author of three books, The Calendar Diet, Healthy in a Hurry, and The Baby and Toddler Cookbook. She's a regular contributor to multiple national health, women's, and cooking magazines, and has been featured in publications such as Fitness, Shape, Oprah, Weight Watchers, Family Circle, Prevention, Parade, and Women's Day, among many others. She's also a spokesperson for the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. Karen, welcome to the show. Hi, Diane. Thank you so much for having me. Well, you know, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the holiday season, many times we overindulge, we, we overeat, and then, of course, we live to regret it. And, and I wonder, you know, what is the likelihood of we're, we're going to make suggestions today for people to eat healthily during the holiday season. What is the likelihood that people will actually do this? The likelihood that people will overeat during the holiday season is really high. I mean, the holiday season, it's just a huge challenge eating-wise for so many of us. But that said, it doesn't have to be. There are strategies that people can follow, little tricks of the trade that they can put in place that can keep them from gaining that pound or two of weight that they usually put on. And the problem with the pound or two of weight that they usually put on is we don't tend to lose this weight. So it may not sound so bad, you know, you're going to gain a pound or two and you don't think much of it, but really if you're never losing that over a decade, that can translate to 10 to 20 pounds. So that's where it really adds up and becomes an issue. So you want to make sure it doesn't happen in the first place. And our goal today is to definitely share tips and strategies to prevent this. Now, I said earlier that uh, many times we consume uh, a lot of calories during the holiday season. Do we know on average how many calories people tend to consume, say, during the, the Thanksgiving meal or the Christmas meal? I've read several different estimates, but one that I saw on WebMD really shocked me. It said that the average American eats 4,500 calories and 229 grams of fat at a traditional Thanksgiving meal. So even if you ate half of that for one meal, that's more than a day's worth of calories. So this is an area, you know, it's the beginning of the holiday season. We're starting it off, and you really want to start off on the right foot. And that doesn't mean that you can't have – special and indulgent meal, but you just don't want to go so overboard that you're going into the holiday season really behind. You're right. And I think sometimes during the holiday season, we tend to eat things that that we don't normally eat. And I'm guilty of that too. I, I really, I overindulge sometimes and I have to remind myself. And one of the things that I, I thought I'd ask you about, because it was a rave many years ago, and even today when I show up 
uh, to Thanksgiving dinners, for example, if I'm bringing the turkey, uh, someone will invariably say to me, can you bring fried turkey? <laughs> so I know this is a popular thing, yeah. And so I wonder, I mean, we never really think about it, but this fried turkey, do we know the difference in fat or caloric content between the fried and the baked? Does it really make that big of a difference given that it's one day? It does. It makes a big difference, especially in terms of fat. And the problem with fat isn't just that it packs on the pounds, but fat makes you, if you're not used to eating tremendous amounts of fat, it really makes you feel weighed down and lethargic. So after Thanksgiving, then you don't feel well in addition to everything else. But just by basis of comparison, an 8-ounce serving of roast white meat turkey, and an 8-ounce serving, is a, that's a good size serving. 8 ounces of white meat turkey has about 300 calories and only 4 grams of fat. But if you were going to have 8 ounces of fried turkey, you'd be getting 520 calories and 27 grams of fat. So that's a tremendous increase in fat, which can really leave you just feeling so lethargic and weighed down and bloated. I think I'm going to uh, make sure the people where I'm going for dinner listen to this broadcast so I won't be taking any fried turkey this year. <laughs> yeah, I would say, you know, that could be a number one strategy is to not have the fried turkey. I mean, there, there's so many other special things to have at Thanksgiving that turkey is actually, it's a natural health food. People don't realize this, but white meat turkey is so lean. I mean, I mentioned an eight ounce serving, but really what most of us, you know, what's recommended is a four ounce serving. So if you're thinking about, a four-ounce serving for 150 calories and you're getting lots of lean protein, that's a tremendous calorie bargain. That's a great thing to put on your plate. So why totally ruin it by frying it? There's so many other things that you can indulge in. You know, it's okay to splurge a little, but I don't know if that's where you want to splurge considering so many other things have added cream and sugar and butter. There's no sense in piling that one on as well. I agree. I agree. And so what is the biggest mistake that people make with regards to holiday eating? I think the biggest mistake that people make is that they don't plan, they wing it. They don't really think about it. They go into a holiday, they know that there's going to be a lot of decadent food there, but they don't really think about what they're going to eat, how they're going to eat it, and when they're going to eat it. And what they may not realize is if they just give a little bit of advanced thought to that, they can sail through the holiday season without gaining any weight. And really for the holidays, that should be the goal. The goal should not be during the holidays weight loss because that's just impossible. I mean, who can accomplish that? But if you can make it from the middle of November until the beginning of January without gaining any weight, that's a tremendous, tremendous accomplishment. And, so, and we, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, so in terms of planning it, I think the first thing that people might want to realize is that if you think about it in advance, when you go to holiday celebrations, you probably have a pretty good idea of what's going to be there. You know, Thanksgiving doesn't vary that much from year to year. So you might want to think before you go about what's going to be there, what you want to splurge on, and what you're not going to waste your time with. And just knowing that in advance can arm you to make some really, really smart decisions that will spare you hundreds of calories. So that's a great idea. I mean, that was going to be my question. Do you, do you say, well, I will eat this and not that? And, and do you look like a party pooper? I mean... <laughs> You're at a holiday celebration, or maybe we just need to change the culture altogether. Right. I don't think you need to look like a party pooper at all because you can still have your favorite foods. But one thing you might want to think about before you go is knowing that there may be special foods that are seasonal. There's also a lot of foods that may be there that are not. There may be chips and dip. There might be cheese and crackers. There might be things you can get any day of the week. So those might be the things that you want to skip. But if you're going to be able to have, you know, your grandmother's stuffing and gravy and you don't normally get that, that might be where you splurge. So thinking about it in advance can help you make those smart decisions and allow yourself to pick one or two holiday favorites and have them. But don't, don't focus on the things that you could have any day of the week because those are just going to give you extra calories that you don't need. Wonderful. And one of the things you talk about, which I think many of us never really think about, is the liquid calories. How does this fit in the picture? Yeah, liquid calories are probably one of the most underestimated sources of holiday calories. And it's not just calories either. I mean, the problem with the liquid calories is everywhere you go, there's alcohol. So what happens is you're getting calories from the alcohol. But even worse than that, what happens is the alcohol really lowers your resistance. So it lowers your inhibitions, and then all of a sudden you're saying yes to things you might normally be able to say no to. So all of a sudden you're taking that second helping of mashed potatoes where you might have said if you hadn't had a couple of glasses of wine, gee, I'm really full. 
So I think the strategy is to delay your drinking so you can make smarter decisions. Obviously, you talk about being a party pooper. You don't want to say you're not going to have anything to drink. That's not much fun, and it's not very realistic. But what you want to do is shorten the period of time that you're going to be drinking. So, for example, when you walk into a party, rather than starting off with a cocktail or a glass of wine, maybe sip on some sparkling water for a little while and then have that drink a little bit later once the meal starts. That way you're not sitting down already with your inhibitions loosened up and grabbing things that you might not normally have, so you'll make much smarter decisions. And then also to stop once dessert comes. You know, sometimes people keep pouring the wine all night long, and if you can have the resolve to do so, just, you know, say, no, thanks, I'm done, or take the wine and spill it down the drain and fill it with fill it a glass with um, some water so that you're not drinking all night long. So that's a great idea. So really pay attention to, to what you're drinking. Uh, one of the things that uh, I often see when I look up information as to, you know, ways to uh, eat well during the holiday, uh, they'll suggest using a smaller plate. And I often think to myself, you know, using a smaller plate, does that mean I'm going to get up multiple times to get the food? I mean, does it really matter if we suggest this to people? Does this work at all? I think it depends on the person. I mean, definitely if you have a smaller plate, you're going to put less food on it and you're going to eat less because what happens is, as a culture, we tend to finish what's in front of us, right? When it's there, you're going to eat it. So if your plate is smaller, if the plate is 25% smaller, you're going to eat 25 percent less food. That said, if you're the kind of person you, you think it's a license to go back and get more, it's not going to work for you. I think a better strategy also, and you can't always get a smaller plate too, and you might feel strange grabbing a salad plate when everybody else is eating off of a dinner plate. So I think a better strategy might be to take the same size plate that everybody else has, but most dinner plates have a lip around them that's an inch or two thick, and that's actually a substantial amount of surface area. Surface area. And what you would want to do is to have that as a boundary that you're not going to fill with food, right? If you leave that outer lip uncovered with food, you're going to save yourself a lot of calories. And then when you do fill your plate, also to think about what you're putting on it. You really want to try and put as many low-calorie, high-volume foods on the plate as possible. So something like with some salad with maybe a little bit of dressing is a great choice because it's going to take up a lot of real estate for very few calories. Whereas if you're filling that with sweet potato casserole, you're going to be filling up a lot of your plate with a lot of calories. So just to make those choices of things that are, are very leafy and green or vegetables will help you keep the calorie content down. That's a, that's a, a great idea. And you, as you mentioned, we do tend to eat what is in front of us. And that is, uh, <laughs> if you really want to see that for yourself, you can go to a buffet and you really see that people eat so much more than they normally would just because it's there. So you're very right about that. What we're going to do is we're going to take a brief break for our sponsors. And when we come back, we will talk a little bit more about other tips and strategies to help ensure that your holiday eating is healthy. So we'll take a brief break. You're listening to Health Talk with Dr. Diane, MD, sponsored by FMG Radio. Please visit Dr. Diane and browse her past shows and guest bios at fmgradio.com forward slash Dr. Diane, MD. That's D-R-D-I-A-N-E-M-D. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, my guest today is Karen Ansel, and we are talking about uh, healthy holiday eating, and she started off just before the break giving us some tips and strategies uh, to help us ensure that our healthy eating during the holiday that we, we continue to do so. And so, Karen, what else? What other tips and strategies that people can use to eat less or even eat healthily during the holidays? I think one of the most important things is to make sure that you go into the holidays for each celebration you go to, that you go into it with strong resistance, that you're not walking in starving. And this is something that I see people doing a lot. And intuitively, it makes sense, but it doesn't really work. People, they won't eat all day so that they can splurge for that party at the end of the day. But inevitably, this ends up backfiring because they arrive so hungry that they end up eating much more than they would have if they just ate sensibly all day long. So 
what I recommend is to eat regular meals during the day, to not skip meals, to make sure that you are having breakfast, that you are having lunch. Maybe if the party is late at night, that you're even having a snack in the afternoon. Now, these don't need to be huge meals. They could even be a little bit smaller than usual. So you could eat lightly, but to make sure that you're eating every four hours or so, so that your blood sugar is on an even keel, and then when you arrive at the party, you're not starving because you really don't want to start grabbing every single thing in sight. That's probably the most important strategic move that people can make, but there are others as well. Um, one is to, you know, some of these parties, they're, especially Thanksgiving, you think of it, it's not Thanksgiving night, it's Thanksgiving day. It's like an all-day eating marathon. So one strategy is to arrive a little late, or to leave a little early, or both. If you can just shave a little bit of time off, you're not going to be standing around eating as much. And I would say the key is there, really, arriving late is really the key. Because if you think about it, you know, you get to your mom's house, you go into the kitchen, you help everybody cooking, there's food around, everybody's talking, everybody's nibbling. This is before the hors d'oeuvres are even put out. So that can help you save hundreds of calories. And also, when you sit down to the meal, you're going to enjoy it more because you're actually going to be hungry for it. Um, others are to bring something health, healthy. I mean, the best thing you could do is, in a perfect world is that you would make the meal yourself, but that's not always possible. But if you're going, bring something healthy so at least you know that there's going to be something there that's safe to eat. And when you do get up to go get your food, if there's a buffet, try and be one of the last ones on the buffet line because once that buffet has been picked over, everything doesn't look so beautiful and tasty as it did at the beginning, and it's not going to look quite as appetizing. So there may be some things that naturally you're inclined to bypass. I like that idea. Yeah, <laughs> no, it works. Yeah. <laughs> I've definitely been there after people have picked over things, and I go, mm, maybe not. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> not looking so good anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, another thing that I found that's helpful is if I drink water, Prior to going, I feel full and don't feel like eating and picking around as much. And one of the things that, that um, I think we all fall prey to, like you say, we'll go and we eat all day and then we take leftovers and continue tomorrow, you know, the next day to, to eat a lot again. So maybe that's another area that we can look at cutting back. Definitely. You know, you don't need to feel the need to take leftovers home. But if you're with somebody who is really, you know, a family member who's really insisting and you don't want to hurt their feelings, what you can do is take the leftovers home and then when you get home, package them up into small containers and freeze them and then take them out in a month or so on a winter night when you don't have time to cook or you don't feel like cooking and have Thanksgiving all over again. So they don't need to go to waste, but you certainly don't need to eat them the next day because the next day is really when you want to start to get back on track, realizing, you know, I think there's two mindsets people might have. One might be like, oh, my goodness, I overdid it. I've blown the whole thing already. I might as well just throw in the towel. Or the other one is to say, it was Thanksgiving. I indulged. I had a great time. It was wonderful. And now I need to get back on track with my healthy eating because in a few weeks there's going to be more celebrations coming up and I want to make sure that I'm healthy and in good condition for those. And this is a good segue into the other question, the next question, because you mentioned your know, people, they encourage you to eat, to take the food home. I mean, how do you deal with family members who are food pushers? You know, I think if they ask you to take it home, that there's no reason to insult them, that you can freeze it, like I mentioned. But if it's at the table, if it's at the party and you've had enough and you really do feel like you're full, that, that's a wonderful thing that you can realize that. And I would not ignore that or push that to the side. Really, in this day and age where we have so much supersized, super caloric foods, I think it's totally okay to say, you know, no thank you, I'm really full, it was delicious, but I just could not eat another bite. And that also paves the way for other people to do the same. There may be other people at the table who are being pressured to eat who don't want to say that, but you're not hurting anybody, you shouldn't be hurting anybody's feelings. I mean, that's just saying you're full, that's a normal physical response, it's kind of like saying I'm tired. Being tired shouldn't hurt anybody's feelings, and being full shouldn't hurt anybody's feelings either. That's, that's correct. <laughs> and we'll remember yeah. that at the, at the table this year. Right. Uh, <laughs> one, we, we talked about some of the tips and strategies to help us to eat less and eat more healthily, but what about um, alternatives to some of the meals that are generally served during the holidays? What are some healthy alternatives? Um, 
you know, more than alternatives, because I think for Thanksgiving, people want to eat Thanksgiving food. So I, I don't usually suggest swaps as much as I like to point out that Thanksgiving in and of itself, if you look at the basic foods that are served on Thanksgiving, these are some of the healthiest foods out there. So it's not the foods themselves. It's what we tend to sometimes do to them. So as I mentioned, that turkey is one of the greatest sources of lean protein that you can get. So that's a keeper for sure. But also Thanksgiving is filled with all kinds of wonderful, good for you vegetables. And this is a great opportunity to load up on them. So you really want to look for color on the Thanksgiving table or buffet. You know, sweet potatoes, green beans, carrots, roast squash. Um, if there's a kale salad, something like that, these are all great things to have. Now, it's true that some of them may be a little bit heavier than the way we normally prepare them, but they're still probably better bets than things like stuffing or mashed potatoes that are covered in gravy. Also, if the sweet potatoes have marshmallows and you're not comfortable with that, you can kind of eat under the marshmallows. But there's, there's definitely a lot of really healthful foods. Um, some of the things we probably could avoid are things like, you know, the bread basket. That's definitely something that we don't need a lot of. And the appetizers tend to be some of the things that really aren't as good for us but are much higher in calories. So, but the meal itself is tremendously helpful. That's great. Um, you mentioned the appetizers. That's, I, I started this practice many years ago where I tend to skip the appetizers and nobody's bothered by it anymore. And even when I go out for dinner, I just avoid that because it just seems like extra stuff I'm eating and it spoils my appetite anyway. So <laughs> it's just one thing that I'll, I'll say, you know, I, I don't really need the appetizer. I'll wait for the main meal. Um, so we've been talking about looking at strategies to you know, ensure that during the holiday seasons we're still eating in a, in a healthy manner as much as possible. But one of the things that we often overlook is exercise. You know, we're so busy, family coming here, we're shopping sometimes. We're so busy that exercise kind of gets, uh, we put it on the back burner, and I wonder if you can share with us the importance of exercise and how can we actually squeeze it in during the holiday season. Yeah, definitely. I mean, exercise is hugely important, not just in terms of burning calories, but also psychologically. It gives us more energy. It makes us feel better during dark winter days. And when we put time and effort into continuing to exercise, it really reinforces our commitment to healthy living. So if you take the time to go to the gym, you're a lot less likely to go and blow your diet with something that has too many calories because you've already put some of the work in. So it's kind of a win-win. If you're continuing to exercise, the chances are that you're going to want to eat more healthfully. But on the flip side, if you wait for the opportunity to happen, if you're crazy busy and you're waiting to find that hour to get to the gym, it is probably not going to happen. So before the holidays, you might want to actually plan out a workout schedule that you think you can realistically stick with. It's kind of like the strategy for the meals, to eat them regularly or to exercise regularly, but the meals may not be as big as what you'd normally have. The workout may not be as long as what you would normally do because you can't spare all the time for it. So even shorter regular workouts are much better than none. And then the flip side of that, too, is to make sure that you're moving regularly during the day, that you're up and walking whenever you can. And one of the things I love, I don't know if you have one of these um, wristband activity monitors, like a, what do I have? I have the Jawbone Up, and there's the Fitbit Flex, and there's a bunch of them now where you put it on your wrist, and it tracks how many steps you take in a day. And you can also use it to plug into your smartphone or computer, and you can use it as a food diary, and it tells you how many calories you've eaten if you record what you ate. So it's this great reinforcer that tells you how many calories you burned through movement, how many steps you took, and then also how much you're taking in. So I find that to be one of the greatest motivators of all, if you can find one. is a, kind of like an advanced holiday present to give yourself, is to get one of these and know up front how much you're moving. And when you see that you're not, you'll be like, oh, my goodness, <laughs> it's time yeah. to get to the gym. It's time to go for that walk. It's time to park the car at the other end of the parking lot. And that way you'll be motivated to keep moving and receive instant feedback. That's great. I, I just jotted that down as a gift for myself. <laughs> it's a good one. I yeah, bought myself a one a few months ago, and it's, it's just the best. Oh, wow. That's great. Now, I love to leave my listeners with 
uh, tip of the week, something tangible that they can implement right away. And so my question for you is, what do you think is the most important factor in ensuring healthy holiday eating? I think the most important thing is to have a plan. If you know in advance what you're going to eat and what you're not going to eat, you are so far ahead of the game because you won't be taken by surprise and you won't make those impulse choices that you're going to regret the next day. So have a plan. I like it. And um, how may our listeners contact you? They can contact me through my website, which is www.karenansell.com, and they can also find me on Twitter at Karen Ansell RD. And I mentioned earlier you were a co-author of three books. Um, how do they get a hold of these books? All of my books are available on Amazon, and there's actually links to them on my website. Excellent. Karen, thank you so much for being on the show and for sharing such wonderful, uh, healthy information. Uh, we have no excuse. We can approach the holiday season in a healthy way. So I thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me, Diane. And for you, the listeners, thank you again for listening. Remember, you can find me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Dr. Diane A. Thompson, and the website is drdianethompson.com. I will leave you with the quote of the week, and it's from Earl of Derby, and it says, those who will not find time to exercise will, will have to find time for illness. Again, remember, your health is your wealth. Please do something healthy this week, and as always, I will see you next time on the broadcast. Have a great week, everyone. You've been listening to Health Talk with Dr. Diane, MD. For show replays and full guest bios, please be sure to visit fmgradio.com forward slash Dr. Diane, MD. That's D-R-D-I-A-N-E, M-D.